Hayat. I'm Rahul Parwan, a senior software engineer with IFM Engineering. And I'm here at this testplex to talk about open source portfolio ideas for testers. Now, as testers, we love open source. We embrace it and uh, we use it day in and day out in our projects. I want to talk about certain open source projects that you would have seen and used yourself, like Selenium, Playwright, APL, Test Sigma, NUnit, Test NG, and so on. Now, these are all open source popular tools that testers use day in and day out. They put them in their resume. You will see job descriptions that list these open source tools as skills. And uh, there is a big attention, love, and market for this open source tools in the testing industry. Now, something that is very interesting to notice is that uh, open source offers a range of tools, be it load testing, UI testing, test engine, test runners. I mean, you will have open source solutions for each and everything. And uh, that's the beauty of uh, the open source market. And with this beautiful market, uh, it, it, it creates a problem because a lot of time people highlight and flaunt a lot of open source tools in their resume. But in reality, for a potential employer, for a person who wants to really assess your skills, it's, it gets really hard to know unless you showcase it through some value way. And as Linus Torvalds says that talk is cheap, show me the code. And today I want to talk about a way how you all can show your skills, you show your testing experience, show your testing capabilities through open source and how you can use all of them to build a portfolio that showcases and reflects your competence, experience and overall capability in the market. So, I mean, in today's world, everything is online. When we are conferencing even online, when we are doing jobs online, our day-to-day -day calls with customers are online, even our learning is online. The important question that everybody should ask themselves is that, do you have a portfolio, a visible record of your work, your skills, that is available online or that can somebody check online or not? Now, if your answer is no, or if your answer is that I have a resume where I've listed all the things, probably it's the right time to gain up or it's the right time to level up because the market is online, everything is online. It's time you bring your own level and your job and skills online too. So if you see this graph uh, visual, applicants in testing. Now, in today's market, 95% people, 90 to 95% people are applying to jobs through resume. Whereas the number of people who apply through portfolio or who apply through a data profile or through a website where they put down all the works that they do or contribution that they do, that is very low. I mean, if you want to go and find out people, probably you would be able to find them in your network or on your fingertips and that that's all. So if you are in the right direction of like applying and showcasing your skills with your resume, this talk is about shifting that approach to the left from with resume to with portfolio. Now, I did this tweet last year that 99% of testers want to use open source tools. And yet 99% of testers don't can contribute to any kind of open source tools or community. Now, contribution is damn easy, but the problem is a lot of people don't know about it. And uh, unless we know this, we understand the value it has for us and the value it has for the larger community, I think most of us cannot start this journey of contribution. So from my experience, I want to talk about 10 such ways through this talk on how you can also start your contribution as a tester and how you can use those contributions to build your portfolio. So first step, uh, very basic in the dev world and similarly in the testing world is the documentation fix. Now as testers, we contribute a lot towards our product documentation. We find gaps in the product documentation and uh, that's a valuable skill. That's a valuable superpower that as a testers we have and we can contribute to this 
read me files i mean we can create setup guides for open source projects or we can highlight these ops this information has got obsoleted and needs to be updated or probably we can update it or sometimes the implementation changes but an old documentation old requirement stays and the same happens with open source projects too because they and then are also projects like any other and uh, for example something needs more elaboration in form of an example or a code block and as testers can be suggest that can be add that and this is one of one of the example how i have found a tool pretty useful and i created a setup guide for that tool how how to use it and uh, uh i i requested the open source uh, project repo to add it in their uh, documentation and that's uh, one way how we can all make contribution the second way is very easy i mean it's uh, something that as testers we do day in and day out and that's about reporting bugs so as testers i mean we find a lot of bugs and uh, because of our mindset that is trained to catch bugs that is trained to catch anomalies I think this is a wonderful superpower we can use to improve these open source project because I mean that's how you make an impact at a community level. And when you do that, you can enhance and make a direct contribution. Now this is an example on the screen of how I I did a certain bug raises when I was trying out Test Sigma, which is again an open source project, and uh, I found certain issues and certain intermittent inconsistencies. and i raised it and now they are there we were discussing with the dev team and in the community and that's one way how we could enhance things and make them better for us and for others or the third way is retesting issues now this is a common thing i mean uh, probably you go you have not got a bug that you have to report the pro- probably the project is mature enough now what you can do is you can go check out bugs that the team has fixed and the team is commenting that can can somebody retest this or retest this on this certain configuration and uh, by doing that you you again help the open source cycle the project cycle in closing the issues so i mean this retesting phase is again very important a uh, lot of bugs uh, usually are there in the system which 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 are just lying there waiting for somebody to be retest pick them up move ahead now the next step is again a super power that most testers have that is advocacy So now, bug advocacy is a super. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful skill, and like any other project, sometimes in open source projects also there are multiple opinions that are there on 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 a bug or on a feature request, and you can do advocacy on why this bug matters or why this feature matters. You can provide oracles. You can provide risks if uh, what what can go wrong and so on. So as testers, I mean, we 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 have a good advocacy skills. So why not use them? to enhance and make a case even in the open source market and i think this is one fundamental example that you can create for yourself that you possess this skill i mean if you have really done advocacy for bugs in the open source project i think that clearly maps out that how when you say you have this skill how you use it and somebody can see how you bring the direct value and impact in project through your skills or the fifth way is to create cheat sheet mind map and visual so i mean this is something that like most projects would need this is an area that usually like people don't talk about but i think in today's world everybody wants like such references quick references mind maps cheat sheet product coverage outline and so on i did this this uh, 5w1h of cometa which which could give a quick overview of what this product is what are its capabilities in a single shot me now i like to do it in mind map but somebody can do it in visual or some some other format or maybe make a cheat sheet and that's how you can again create a contribution and that also shows i mean your grip into things and i mean your passion for such projects so i think this is a good skill i mean if you can summarize if you can you know, put down to things in a visual format again a powerful approach the next is responding to queries so i think uh, uh it's not always about raising the bugs it's not always about uh, bringing an impact on on the project uh, code or uh, things but sometimes you can help other people get started and i think for any community they need people who can assist others there are always people who will be beginning who will face issues that you as a old time community member has seen or old time open source member has seen that a lot of people are facing it you could probably make a video on that or 
you could respond to those queries, you can blog about them. And that's again a way how you contribute and how you showcase your engagement in an uh, open source project. Next is uh, responding to surveys and feedback. I know a uh, lot of times we get uh, mails with, uh, can you help us with this feedback? Can you help us evolve or develop this new product, new feature and so on. And it's unfortunate that uh, less than 10% or 5% people actually respond to any form of surveys and feedbacks. But just your response to surveys, feedback can directly help and contribute to the improvement of such projects. So next time you see it, just go fill out the form. Fill out the genuine opinion, what you feel should work. Maybe you have some suggestions or you have some challenges that you have faced and you want to share. Use this as a medium to talk about those. Next is experience reports. I mean, with, with so many open source projects that are coming in, I mean, people want to know more about them. People want to know what is your personal experience with these tools. Every tool has their own marketing, has their own uh, way of documenting, sharing, and so on. But what is important for a lot of people is they want to know how this tool has worked for somebody else in a context. And if you can create experience reports, I think that's another way in which you directly broaden your knowledge and you share it and make it more scalable. So, I mean, that's also a way to scale yourself, share your experiences. On the screen, you will see an example of how I have created a blog on uh, systematic exploratory testing with Yati, which is a tool that I've been using for a long time now. And then I decided to blog about it and that's how directly I add a value to any future user who wants to try IT and they can directly see what were my challenges, how and in what on way it helped me and so on. The next thing, point nine, is new features and enhancements. So we all love uh, to solve our problems but if you feel, I mean, you have a problem and you, you suspect that it could be a problem that a lot of people would also be facing, you can directly raise new features on enhancement request. You can make a case uh, that why this kind of feature request should be prioritized or should, should uh, I mean, be, be important for the project team to look at. And uh, that's also a skill that I think as a tester would help you do test advocacy and uh, overall product advocacy better than in which direction you want the product to look into. And that's, that's a, uh, Something that as a testers, we, we should target at, I mean, being the headlights of the project and helping the people in the project see the things that matters the most. So if you have a feature request, enhancement, something should be improved, raise it. And the last thing which I've purposefully kept last, because when I talk about code contributions, which is the point number 10, a lot of people say, I mean, we, we don't know much coding or we don't want to create a tool, we are testers. But if, for example, you want to add unit test to a project, I mean, every project appreciates unit test, you can go add them into the open source projects. Or if you are into coding, if you want to build something, contribute to that, I think that's a direct way how you can add value, how you can create some feature. And that's really powerful. So I mean, if you are into coding, if you like coding, and uh, that is something you're passionate about and you want to develop more skills in that, I think, welcome, go and try this out. So, I mean, now what we can't uh, say is that learn to sell, learn to build. If you can do both, you will be unstoppable. As a tester, I say I want to learn to test, learn to sell. And, I mean, when you try and do both, you will be unstoppable. Your, your portfolio will be unstoppable and you will be able to really share and express uh, the things and your skills a lot better. In the end, I just want to like share these names of popular people uh, in the community who work hard for open source projects. You can follow them, talk to them, share, seek their advices that how can you get started. I have talked to a couple of them and they have helped me in my journey. And uh, that's uh, all. If you have any thoughts, questions, I'm there in the chat. Ask me. And you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. And uh, in if you have any doubts or questions, we can always connect offline or one to one. So that's all. Thank you. Thanks to the test for this wonderful opportunity. Have a nice conference. Bye.